Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on today's video tutorial I am going to show you how you can do some fun things with these tarnished, wow look at that one, um, silver platters and serving pieces that you can pick up at your local thrift stores. Maybe you have some of these bad boys hanging out under the cupboards or in your dining room, or maybe your mother, your sister, your great aunt Sue, your next door neighbor has a bunch of these that are tarnished that they're uh, just getting ready to donate. Um, but I'm gonna show you some fun things that you can do. I'm gonna show you how you can mod podge them, decoupage them with paper napkins. I'm gonna show you how you can turn them into a beautiful piece of art using magnets. And then I'm gonna show you some stenciling ideas and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to wash it off and do something new each time. So, let's see, where should we start? Well, let's start with the Mod Podge. Okay, today I'm just using your basic Mod Podge. And I think I'm gonna use this piece right here. I have a pile of trays that have been stenciled. I really love this one, but it is heavy. Um, that have been stenciled, stenciled that I have cleaned off. And I just hang on to this because I keep using them over and over and over again. Okay, so let's talk about paint before we get into Mod Podge. When you pick up a silver, a tarnished silver platter, um, you're gonna wanna clean it the best you can and make sure it's fully dry. And then recently, what I have been doing and what I would recommend that you do is that you get a paint like this. This is Waverly chalk acrylic paint, no prep. Uh, it's a matte finish and I love this color. It is called plaster, and that is what this is. Uh, you could do something fun, like make a pumpkin using the orange. Um, you could go crazy and do a blue. You could do black. Um, these platters are gonna take about two coats of paint, and when they're done, they're gonna look basically like this. Okay. So then you need to figure out what you want to decoupage on your platter. And we're doing napkins. And I'm trying to decide, okay, one tip that I want to tell you is if you iron your napkins before you decoupage, you'll get a little bit nicer result. And you know what, actually, I think I want to use this one and I think I'm gonna do this. This did have a stencil on it that said something about lemons. And this actually was a, just a tray, it's not even tarnished, but it was a beautiful tray that my friend Diane Brown gave me. And um, yeah, and this is gonna be perfect. Okay, this is a napkin that I think I picked up in England, but um, you know, you can get pretty napkins everywhere. When you're gonna do something like the center of a tray, you want a napkin that has an all-over pattern that does not have an up or down. Like this would be a great option. This would be a great option. Okay, this would not be a great option because you can see uh, the birds are each facing different directions. So if I put that on here, you know, I could just cut out a bird, but the two on the top would be upside down. And same with this, happy Thanksgiving. I just grabbed a couple of napkins to show you. See, this would not work uh, because it's four different ways. And sometimes your beautiful napkins are gonna look like this. Only half of them are printed. Uh, the side that would show when you're using them. So uh, you wanna pick something either like this which would be super pretty. Let's do this one. I'm so indecisive today. Okay, let me set these other napkins aside. And then the first thing 
thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got both, uh, you've got all the plies off because you only want the top ply. And this is basic Mod Podge, so I'll go through it quickly. And I have an example to show you. Okay, so this is a nicer napkin and it has three plies. And I'm taking off all at once the back two plies. And I'll just hang on to these to wipe my hands on. I mean, no point throwing them away. Um, okay, so pretend that you saw me paint this with two coats of a dark blue, uh, no prep kind of acrylic or chalk paint, okay? And um, now what I need to do is make a template, and I'm gonna just grab a piece of computer paper. And that works just fine. And I'm gonna lay it in the center of my tray. Let me scooch this back a little bit further. And I'm just gonna kinda go to the edges. So I know roughly how big my little circle needs to be. Okay, my computer paper is not wide enough, but that's okay, I can guess where the edges on the sides are. Stay with me because next up, I'm gonna show you magnets and oh my gosh. Uh, if you like buttons, or you have old broken jewelry, or brooches, or bling, or even seashells, there are so many cool things that you can do. Okay, so I'm going to take my, sorry, my napkin, and I'm going to lay this in the center, or as close to the center as I can figure out. Let's go it so I know where the center is. Okay, and I'm just gonna use a pencil to roughly trace it without tearing my very thin paper napkin. I do think that when you are decoupaging a napkin onto a silver platter, that it's better to start with a silver platter that has been painted. Whatever color you want that would kind of make sense with the napkin um, is gonna be better. Okay, so I just traced this. We'll cut it out in just a second, but let's get our Mod Podge going. And I'm just gonna grab a foam brush and pour a little bit of Mod Podge. This doesn't take very much onto the center. Ooh, this is a really terrible brush. I'm going to toss it and get a different one. They're all kind of terrible. Okay. And I'm going to go all the way up to the edge. And I'm just putting a thin coat of Mod Podge on here. So tell me in the comments, do you have any of these different kinds of vintage um, tarnished silver hanging out in your china closet, uh, underneath the sink, um, in your basement? Uh, I mean, that's where they're usually hiding. And people, I find that people don't, don't really use this anymore. And once you get something on it, it's almost impossible to move, remove the tarnish. So um, tell me if you have any pieces of this and tell me if you have ever uh, painted or crafted with them. Okay, good enough. Let's 
set this aside for a minute while we cut out our napkin. to be careful not to tear your napkin as you're cutting, which I did with this project I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm trying to see where is my pencil mark. This design probably would be better on a silver platter that had the center painted white. It would show up more. But we're going to do it on this one because I have it handy and ready to go that has the center painted blue. And you can, um, you don't have to stick to white or black. You can paint either the center or the whole darn thing, whatever color you want. And um, some of these are magnetic, so we'll talk about that too. Those are the ones that I use with the magnets, the button magnets. Okay, we're almost there. Good enough. And this is one ply, so make sure you get all of them off. Um, okay, and here's my piece. Normally, it would not matter where you did your, where you decoupage, but this one has handles. So I wanna make sure that I have my napkin on here straight. I'm gonna show you a little Trick. I love doing decoupage with an iron, but that's really not very possible. I didn't, didn't do a good job with that, but once it's laid down, it's down. Okay, then the next thing I like to do is just take a Ziploc bag, whatever size you have on hand, start in the center, and start pressing your napkin into the Mod Podge. I have found that this is the best way to get it on. And I did, there's some that I'm going to have to try without having it stick to your hands and then pull up little pieces. now I'm going to end up tearing it so I'm not going to but there is some that I will need to trim right there okay so then once it's stuck down um, what you want to do is just let it thoroughly dry and then you're going to apply one more coat of Mod Podge on there and let's see is this magnetic no it's not okay and here's one that I did this morning isn't it pretty? I love this napkin. It's an all over print. Um, it's very subtle. And this to me would look beautiful in a book rack, in a book stand, um, on either in an entertainment center, on a cabinet, um, on top of the fireplace mantle, in your kitchen. This particular piece of tarnished silver is magnetic. So I made this button magnet with a, a black button this morning, just to show you. And you could use this as a place to put some little notes or a couple little pictures on this one. Um, what, if I rem am remembering correctly, <laughs> I did a video about all of this a few years ago. 
um, real silver is not magnetic. And almost all of these pieces are just plated. They're silver plated, super thin, they're not valuable. Uh, if you have a family heirloom or something that is solid silver, do not paint or mod podge it, please. Uh, but anyways, the more like base material, iron, that kind of thing that has in it, the more magnetic it will be. So, what do you guys think? Let me grab a couple right here. And I'll come back and explain this in just a second. So, I could put, I made mean, little pieces of paper. Let's make one. Imagine that this is a photo. You know, I could do something like that. Or I could write, do some hand calligraphy, something beautiful. Okay, so then when your uh, project is dry, you just want to add one more coat of Mod Podge to it. It's going to look very milky. And most likely, if you've used the tray and then cleaned it and maybe repainted it and then used it and then repainted it and then used it, it might be a little bumpy like this one. But what do you guys think about that? Isn't it pretty? Yeah, it's very, very subtle to me. Okay, so let's see where can we send these. All right, so that was the first idea, the idea of Mod Podge. Now let's talk about magnets. This is something that I made, um, I think, three years ago. And it's just, it was super tarnished. It happens to be, have a base metal in here that is very magnetic. And I used a bunch of my favorite silver buttons to make button magnets. And then I arranged them in the shape of a Christmas tree. So this is just painted. And um, I probably picked this platter up, this tarnished silver piece, at Goodwill for three or four dollars. So it wasn't a huge investment. And I've had it sitting here in my bookshelf for at least three years. And it just makes me happy because I love buttons. So if you love buttons, I'm going to show you how to make these magnet buttons. And then you're just going to want to test all your silver to see what is magnetic and what is not. And then, um, because it's not so obvious when you're looking at them, like, let me see if this one is magnetic. Nope. This is one that I'm in process of repainting. Nope, it's not magnetic. Here's one that we're going to do in just a minute. And nope, it's not magnetic. Here's a beautiful one. Nope, it's not magnetic. This is the dark blue, by the way, which I think is lovely. I love that combination. Here's a couple of pieces that I've picked up more recently. This is magnetic. Nope. So you might want to take a magnet with you if you're out shopping to see what you can find. Okay, that is magnetic. All right. So let's make a couple of um, button magnets. Like I said, you could use whatever color um, of button you like, whether it's a beautiful mother of pearl. And up here, I don't think I can reach it. Let me see if I can aim my camera up real quick. There's another platter up here that I painted, I painted dark black. It is magnetic and it's covered in mother of pearl buttons in the shape of a cross. Can you guys see that? I'll get close ups of it. Let's see. I'm probably wonky now. Not too bad. Okay, so you can use whatever kind of um, 
uh, button you might like. You can use some of these bigger jewelry pieces, which we're going to do. You could use a broken earring. You could use a seashell. You can do a whole bunch of things. Okay, this is um, a piece of jewelry, or it's a bead, a big bead for a piece of jewelry. And I am just going to do a little hot glue magic, one of these button magnets on the back of it, and show you how you could use it. Um, I do want to say that these magnetic buttons come in a couple different sizes. This is the size I like the best. This is a smaller size. I think these came from Walmart. Um, I think. But um, button magnets are awesome, but they're very, very, very bad for children. Uh, or pets to eat, especially if they eat multiples of them. You usually end up having to have major surgery. So when you're working with button magnets, keep track of how many you've gotten out, and then as soon as you're finished, put them away so that you don't um, have an issue with somebody coming into your craft space and finding a couple button magnets on the floor and thinking they look like a piece of candy. Okay. Um, so, let's see, where's my hot glue gun? This is not completely flat, but I don't think that matters at all. Let's see which side of this magnet, that's a good side, does my tray like the best. And I'm just going to put, nobody's going to see the back, so I'm putting a big blob of hot glue on there, and then I'm trying to... Push this down as flat as possible. And here is my button magnet. And here it is. Easy. Easy, easy, easy peasy. Okay, so you can do the same thing with um, any kind of a black or whatever color button. I do want to point out these, though. They have a metal shank which is that piece, and that's how they're put on a garment. And sometimes you can clip that metal shank off. Let's try this one. Sometimes you just can't. And if you can't clip it off with something like this or some wire cutters, then you're not gonna be able to use that button because the back, oh, that did come off. The back, oh, and I also lost my diamond. <laughs> the back needs to be flat, so let me pop my diamond back in here. What was up? Okay. So for this one, I'm going to use a smaller magnet. Let's see which side does my tray like better. It likes that one. So, put a big pile of hot glue here. Stick my magnet in there. You can do this idea on a tray that might be a family heirloom that you're not going to paint. So if you have something that you want to display and you want to do something, um, and it's a family heirloom, so you don't want to paint or decoupage it, you can make an arrangement of button magnets with buttons or seashells or whatever little doodad you want um, to create something that you can display. This piece still has the sticker from Goodwill on it, $2.99. So you can see how super easy it is to create something like this. This is seriously one of my favorites. I usually pull this Christmas tree out at Christmas time and put it somewhere out in my family room. And then I just set it on my shelves in here for the whole rest of the year because it's too pretty to just put it away. Okay. So we did the Mod Podge. This is the magnet. And now I'm going to show you the much more, which 
This is something I made this morning. I, um, okay, when I'm gonna stencil on a piece of silver, tarnished silver that I have painted, I like to apply a very thin coat of wax on the center before I stencil. And what that does is it helps it so that your stencil doesn't act accidentally, because these are sticky, pull up bits of the black paint or whatever color it might be. It helps with that. It also helps so that you can get your stencil off a little easier and it makes it easier to clean. Okay, so let me show you how you do that real quick. Let's see, which one did I decide we were going to do? I think we'll do this one just for fun. This one, I painted the center and then I did some dry brush around it, um, around the rim. So I have a whole box in my uh, closet here that has the, a box of silver. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to apply this um, wax. We're gonna do a stencil, and then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to remove it. Okay, so this is wax from magnoliadiy.com. This is what it looks like. It has no odor. So if you've been working with stinky uh, wax, clear wax, for your wood projects or for something like this, you need to try this. It's fabulous. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on my cut up t-shirt. And it is going to make the um, painted area look a little bit shiny. I just want to make sure I get the whole thing. And I'm going to buff it off. And you don't need to wait to do the next step. So this stuff is great. If you've been needing wax, um, let me know in the comments and I'll get you a direct link so you don't have to hunt that down. Okay, so we're going to use this stencil that we used yesterday during Christ and Crafting. This says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 105. Isn't that pretty? I made this yesterday and I also made an awesome bag that I'm going to be using for my Bible study materials to share. Okay, so I'm going to take my stencil off of the backing sheet, which is labeled, so I know which side to put it back on. I have way too many things on my desk right now, and I'm going to fuzz it a little bit. I could fuzz it on this little cotton dress that I have on. I could fuzz it on a pair of jeans. I could fuzz it on this tacky towel, which is also from MagnoliaDIY.com. And um, this just makes it so it's just a little bit less sticky. And I'll be, I should be able to pull it up easy. And it's not going to pull up, knock on wood, <laughs> any of the paint that is on here. And I will say that this is a piece that I had stenciled with something else, and when I was tired of that, I just took it off, and um, I'll show you how easy it is to get it off, and now we're gonna do something different. Sometimes when it is a white or creamy ivory color, and you stencil on it, sometimes you're going to need uh, to give to wash it off and let it dry and then give it one thin coat of paint just to cover that up. Okay, so I have my stencil down. I'm just going to use white chalk paste, but there are a ton of options. And this chalk paste is not permanent, so that's going to make it easy for me to get it up. Get the get the towel. And then I'm using a small cut apart squeegee. Hey, thank you everyone who did stars. I so appreciate that. Um, that is one of the ways that I am able to 
keep crafting and um, how I'm able to go to Goodwill and pick up trays and stuff to show you how I just do everything. So I so appreciate that. Okay, I'm just applying this chalk paste all over and then this is on the angled side of my squeegee. Then I'm gonna put the excess back in my little pot and I'm gonna use the straighter side and I'm just gonna scrape up the big blobs. And put all that goodness back in my little pot because I can use it next time and there's no point, you know, wasting any of that goodness. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And da, 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 the combination of fuzzing my stencil well, oh my gosh, it's so pretty, and using the wax gave me a super crisp impression. And um, it was easy to get my stencil up. Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? This would be so lovely sitting in a book um, stand. I really have way too much stuff on my desk here. Let me throw these in my tub. So I can close my chalk paste. You never want to leave your chalk paste open because that is how it can get dried out. So close it right away. Okay, so look how pretty this would be. It is good to have God's word around your house. I did a whole video talking about um, hiding God's word in your heart um, and how having different pieces throughout your house that remind you of scripture, remind you of God's goodness, faithfulness, your salvation, how that is good for you. And it's also good for the people who are coming into your house, your friends, family, um, people who might be coming to do, you know, to fix something, to see God's word displayed in your house prominently. It can open doors for conversations. So I think it's great to have pieces in your house that have scripture. And this is beautiful. I'm going to keep it until I'm ready to change it. I'll put it out somewhere. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you a couple pieces that I have from a long time ago. They're super dusty. Oh my goodness. This is a really tarnished big platter. I'm sure it came from Goodwill. And on this, I stenciled with gray chalk paste. This awesome saying that um, I have this in my office here in my craft room all the time. This is a really good reminder for me that I still remember when I prayed for the things that I have now because it's so easy to get to feel discontentment because you're not you know, one step further along or 10 steps further along. But when I look back to where I was last year, the year before, a couple years before that, and I remember for praying to be in any area of my life where I am now, that helps me be more content. So this was a piece that I made on the Facebook Live here. I'll see if I can find that video. Uh, I painted it with some kind of creamy colored chalk paste. You could use this plaster, uh, Waverly. Um, it says chalk, no prep acrylic paint. I get mine at Walmart. You could do that. Then I stenciled it with gray chalk paste in this awesome stencil. And then we took, in this video, um, I want you to see it, so I'll see if I can find it. Um, I took some clothesline rope from Walmart and put it on the inside rim here, and we made some flowers using it too. So I love this. This is one of my all-time favorite pieces. And it's just sitting right over here. 
And I think about those things, about being grateful, remembering when I was praying for the things that I have now, uh, when I see it. Okay, another piece that I did, I'm gonna put this, um, I did this as a Christ in crafting, using another beautiful tarnished tray. It might be too heavy to go on this. Well, let's see. Was this one. And I, I painted it black, and then I stenciled with white chalk paste this um, saying. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And this is a beautiful stencil. And then just using a dry brush and some chalk paste, I sort of created these waves. And in that Christ and Crafting, we were talking about how God parted the Red Sea. And um, how God was, God was, is the way maker. Uh, the light in the darkness. Uh, so it's not pretty, so I've not taken this one off either because it's just beautiful. I love it. All right, and then I have one more and then I will show you how you can remove it. This is another one that's sitting right over here that's also really uh, meaningful to me. And it, I used this stencil, which is Romans 5, 8. And it says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I did a Facebook Live on this one. The translation of that verse that I love the most is, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Anyways, it's pretty awesome to, to think about the fact that we really did not deserve salvation when it was provided for us, but he loves us so much that while we were still being awful, um, he provided a solution for our sin problem, just like those of us who have children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews or, you know, any small person that you've been a part of raising, uh, when they can be really naughty and you're like not happy with them, but you still love them and you would still die for them. Um, so I always have this sitting in a little book stand over here. And I always have this sitting, oh, in this book stand right here. Let me put it back to mark everything that's down. Um, okay, so before I came live, I did this. This is called Tom Turkey. It's a beautiful, super detailed stencil. And at the top it says, A. Mole Grocery Company, Importers and Wholesalers, established 1858. I didn't have room to do this part, so I just did Tom Turkey with white chalk paste. Look how pretty he is. This would be so pretty to put out if you are doing um, Thanksgiving dinner or lunch uh, at your house, um, or if you can find some inexpensive tarnished silver platters, this would be a wonderful gift to give somebody who might be hosting you for Thanksgiving. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get it off. I'm just gonna spritz on some water. And I'm going to use antibacterial wipe because that's what I have in here. You could also plunk this right in the sink. You're going to see how it comes right off. Oh, look, this is a hair from a brush that I got stuck in there covered with stuff right now. So, just see how easy that was to get that off. It will stay hard and stable though until you get it wet. Because this has been in my hall closet in a box with all these other silver pieces for at least a year. Okay, so let's do this one. We're gonna redo the turkey. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit more 
up my wax because it makes it so crisp and so easy to get your stencil off. And it helps prevent you from pulling up some of the black paint. I'm looking at my piece right now and I'm thinking, oh my word, I wonder how many times I've stenciled on it, cleaned it off, and then stenciled on it and cleaned it off, and stenciled on it and cleaned it off, like I'm doing today. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Tom Turkey stencil, and I am going to, thank you so much for the stars, you guys. I really appreciate that, and all your sweet comments. I wanna know if, you've, if you have done anything like this. Um, and if you have uh, crummy, vintage, tarnished silver platters hanging out in your cupboards, your basement, you know, under the sink, in the um, china closet, whatnot. Okay, so I'm just going to fuzz that up just a little bit. And I could do it on my dress or a pair of jeans or a pair of khakis, any kind of low lint tea towel. And there's no up or down for this one because it doesn't have handles. So I'm just going to put it where I think I want it. I'm going to get some white chalk paste. You know what, let's do light gray. Let me see if I have any. Is it open yet? Yes. Okay, this is called cool gray. Let's do that instead, because you've seen white. You could do, um, if it was painted white, you could do uh, some brighter colors. It's totally up to you. This might be too dark to be able to see. I don't know. We'll do it, and then we'll see how it looks. And it'll be easy to remove if it's too dark. I'm just going to pay attention to the edges here, get my whole stencil covered, and then I'm going to start with the flat side, just scraping off my excess chalk paste, where it's like big clumps. I'm going to put that back in my little pot. what it looks like. We'll see. Oh, it's pretty. Oh my goodness. Maybe I like it better in the gray than I did in the white. Um, but there are tons of different options. So what do you guys think about that? And of course you could do some, you could put your turkey lower and you could do a messy bow. Uh, you could write something on it. There's lots of options. I just wanted to show you really how super easy it is to get the chalk paste off um, and reuse your piece. I want to encourage you that um, these pieces, you can do all kinds of different things with them. Um, once you get the center painted or the whole thing, if that's what you decide to do. This one was so bad that I did decide to paint the whole thing. Um, and then if you use chalk paste, you can take it up just as easy and reinvent it next season into Mr. Tom Turkey, a Bible verse, um, a design, whatever you would like to do. So here are the three things that we did. We did... The decoupage, that was the first one. We actually did this piece right here. And this is the piece, very subtle, that I decoupaged before I came live. It's not pretty. And here is my magnet, uh, the art. 
that I created with uh, vintage silvery buttons and the magnet, the button magnets that look like this, and a little hot glue. And then here is the beautiful tray that we just made using the thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 105, 119 verse 105. We did that. We just did Mr. Tom Turkey. And I showed you these other two pieces that are always on my desk. And then I showed you this one, which is one of my all-time favorite pieces. So that's what we did today. If you missed any or all of this, um, you can come back as soon as I'm not live anymore and rewatch the replay uh, from wherever you might have picked up or missed out or if there was some information that you wanted that you didn't get, you can just kind of scan through there and rewatch it. I would love it if you, um, if these, this, these ideas appeal to you. I would love it if you would consider sprinkling this video to your social media or telling a friend about it. Let me know if you want links to any of these awesome stencils or chalk paste or absolutely anything else. If you're looking for trays, I talked about this at the very start, but let me just do it one more time. Um, look in your cabinets. It doesn't matter if they're completely disgusting, tarnished, just like, well, this one's not even that bad. But it doesn't matter how tarnished they are. This one's not even that bad. But look at home first. Then ask your family, friends, and neighbors if they have any tarnished silver trays that they were planning to either throw away or donate. So look at home, then ask then consider going to whatever thrift store you like to frequent um, and start looking for these trays at thrift stores, at garage sales, um, at antique malls. They're going to mark them up a little bit more, but um, those are some options. So, hope you liked this video, that it wasn't too much information all at once, but I really just wanted to do a deep dive into tarnished silver trays and what you can do with them. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want links and all that good stuff. And I will get pictures and I will see you guys later. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day.